Live from Jacksonville, Florida, it is a picture-perfect night inside Everbank Field as we get set to kick off the road to France. The U.S. Women's National Team pregame show is sponsored by AT&T. Fans filing in, bundling up as they get set to witness the first of what will be a two-game set between the U.S. Women's National Team and Mexico. Hey, everybody, I'm Katie Witham alongside Leslie Osborne, the former U.S. Women's National Team midfielder. And, Leslie, it's been a while since these two teams faced one another on the pitch. Exactly almost two years, 2016, the last time during Olympic qualifiers where the U.S. came out on top 1-0. Tonight, though, what are you expecting? I'm expecting to see a pretty confident U.S women's national team after winning the she believes cup they played against three of the top best teams in the world and only conceded one goal the entire tournament and because of injuries Jill Ellis was able to play new players younger players put them in different positions and continue to work on the details within their system and the roles and responsibilities and we see how deep Ladies this team is and I think the US women's national team the deepest pool ever you mentioned coming off those games against some of the best in the world tonight it's Mexico how different is this this game. Very different. They're a CONCACAF opponent. In the past, they've had a different style, different formation, and been very defensive minded. But 18 years later, they have a new coach. And Medina has taken this young team, inserted a new identity, and said, We're going to go at teams aggressively, offensively, and really go after teams. So, to be honest, I'm excited to see what kind of team we see tonight out there. Well, I'm excited to see the lineups. Let's take our first look tonight at the United States. Well, Jill's going to stick with her 4 3 3, making two changes from the England game. And Tierna Davidson, number 17, gets that start next to Abby Dahlkamper, and she's so composed and poised on the ball. And number three, Andy Sullivan, is going to play in that holding mid sixth position, and she's got to link the front line. And the front line's been very consistent, but number 11, Mallory Hugh, is on fire. She's playing the best soccer of her entire life. What about Mexico? And Coach Medina is going to come out in a 4-5-1. And Bianca Sierra, number three in the back line, a solid player, but has to be that leader in the back line because the U.S. is going to come at them all game long. And number 11, Monica Ocampo, is my favorite player, a stabilizer in the midfielder. She's got a strong engine for being such an experienced vet. And they're going to look for number 19, Katia Johnson, up top, who is a great finisher inside that box. Mexico told us yesterday they're looking at this one as a measuring stick game. The U.S. are undefeated so far in 2018, looking to build on that. J.P. Della Camera and Ali Wagner join us next. Stick around. The Road to France pregame show is brought to you by AT&T. From Jacksonville, Florida, USA gets ready to take on Mexico in this international friendly. Welcome everyone to the show with Ali Wagner and JP Della Cameron. 2017 head coach Jill Ellis experimented a lot, Ali, but in 2018 with a World Cup qualifying year ahead, yeah. what is the focus? It's got to be performance, right? This is all about ramping up towards qualification. And with that in mind, JP, I think it's fair to begin raising expectations for what we see out of this U.S. side. I'm not talking necessarily about results, but performance. In this two-game series against Mexico, it's a young side. They should be able to go out there and dominate, really, from the start to the finish of the 90 minutes. And with that, I'm not talking about the U.S. press that's so characteristic of this squad. I'm talking about starting to identify their attacking personality, a more measured approach, the controlling the tempo of the game, and showing everyone that they can pull Mexico out of shape and how they want to go about their business in the final third. After four games in 2018, the USA is perfect 4-0-0. This is the first of two games coming up against Mexico to go starting lineups in the kickoff when we come back. Breakfast has come out of its shell. Crisp bacon, seasoned potatoes, and cheddar cheese all wrapped in a fried egg. Wake up with two naked egg tacos for just $3.49 only at Taco Bell. Teams are on the field, lining up side by side as we await the national anthems of the two countries. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats for the playing of the national anthem of Mexico.
please remain standing and welcome singer-songwriter Terrilyn Ramsey to perform the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we had at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the air Rollers fire for the ramparts we watched. They were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets ran glad, the bombs bursting in a gate through the night that our flag was still there. The USA getting ready to take on Mexico. This will be their 35th meeting, and it's been a lopsided overall series with Mexico only winning one time, and there's also been one draw. The U.S. has won 32 of those games. Standing by downstairs, USA head coach Jill Ellis with Katie with them. Katie. Jill, I know you always want to see a goal in the first half, but what do you need to see from your side within these first 45 to constitute a successful first half? Well, certainly a few goals would be great. Um, no, I think what we want to try and dominate with the ball and without the ball. I mean, I think uh, I want to see us with confidence in our one and two touch passing game and just a work ethic in our defending and just, you know, 11 players both sides of the ball working hard together. So that's hopefully what we'll see. Thanks for the time. Roberto Medina is the new head coach of Mexico. It seems strange to look at that bench and not see Leo Cuellar there. Cuellar was their head coach for the last 18 seasons. Our match referee, Cardella Samuels, she is from Jamaica. We're minutes away from kickoff. USA wearing their new Nike uniforms. First time we've seen them on the women's side. The men made their debut of the new uniforms in Cary, North Carolina, and Mexico will be in red. And it'll be interesting, Allie, to see what kind of Mexico team we'll see under a new head coach. It will be interesting. I mean, they've all, when we talked to him yesterday, the, the common theme was they're developing an identity, something that they had lost under Cuellar for his long reign that they, he was at the helm. And I think they've talked about keeping it tight defensively and just quick attacks when they decide to go forward, a more aggressive mentality. We'll see how it plays out today, though, because sometimes the U.S. can just put you on under pressure where you're not expecting it. We are going to see a familiar goalkeeper for Mexico, Bianca Henninger who plays for the Houston Dash, and the USA's backup goalkeeper, Jane Campbell, also plays for the Houston Dash. But we will see Alyssa Nair again tonight for the USA. This will be her eighth consecutive start. And that's a big question mark with goalkeeper situation. It seems like Jill Ellis keeps going with Nair. We'll see how that plays out going forward, but she hasn't had the cleanest of games in the NWSL. Final huddle for the USA. Alex Morgan today will wear the captain's armband. The normal captains of this team, Becky Sauerbrunn and Carly Lloyd, start the day on the USA bench. Monica Ocampo wearing the captain's armband for Mexico. First of two games versus Mexico. Second game on Fox Network on Sunday from Houston, Texas. On that whistle, Alex Morgan puts it 
into play, and we are underway as Crystal Gunn takes it on this left side. Playing as an outside back, she can play a number of positions for this U.S. squad. Dal Kemper and Davidson anchoring the center of that defense for the USA. They bypass Sana to the right, Lindsay Horan. Right in front of the Mexico bench, dispossessed. Johnson lost it. U.S. back on the ball. Halfway line gained. Up for Rapino, who even in her mid-30s has been so effective for this U.S. team. And really probably in her peak form coming off of her NWSL season last year. It started hot again this year. But early on in this match, JP, we're already seeing that it's not going to be the U.S. dropping their center mid into that center back position to build out. The four center backs will shift into a three with Dunn getting higher on the left flank. This is Rapino moving it inside. Quick shot taken, and Henninger has that. And just to look at Pino getting down that left flank. Little slip inside there. Cut back ball to Morgan Bryan advancing out of midfield. Doesn't connect well on it. And there moving it to this right side. Abby Dow Kemper makes her 15th consecutive start for this U.S. squad. Normally she plays beside Becky Sauerbrunn, but Sauerbrunn was injured, had a foot injury. So this is the first time she's been able to come back on this team. But right now, she's watching from that USA bench. And it's opened the door for Tiana Davidson, who's taken that role extremely well as the young 19-year-old. Leads the team in minutes played, tied with Alyssa Nair, but only field player to play every minute. Push forward, Horan in the box. Couldn't get a shot off. Ocampo dispossessed. Held up there by the US. Pushed back by Sullivan. Now played wide. Well, Horan did a good job to keep that in, but Mexico takes over with Ocampo, dropping it off. Left side for Flores, and she lost it. And you throw in for Emily Sonnet, who plays for the defending NWSL champion, Portland Thorns. Dal Kemper. Davidson out of Stanford University. Tried the long ball, that was denied, but the foul was given, free kick U.S. And the timing on that entry pass from Davidson, just a little late, it was a nice pull off by Rapino with Morgan Bryan slipping in behind her. To the end line, done. Rapino, Bryan, slipping it through, done. End line, cutting it across, Horan. Awkward touch, got a second one on it. U.S. still with it. Deflected away, and then the quick shot taken wide of Henninger. It's a goal kick for Mexico. And a couple good early spells from the U.S. I think they are doing a nice job of finding little pockets of space on the inside of Mexico. Twenty-seven-year-old Henninger. Attended Santa Clara University. Played for the U.S. actually as an under 20. Jill Ellis was the head coach of that team. Horan. Mexico got it back for a split second. Sullivan played it forward. Towards Mallory Pugh, doesn't get there. Horan tried to get it forward to Pugh. For Ocampo, that's blocked. Sonnet, Sullivan, in some trouble. Had enough on that ball back to Dal Kemper. For Nair. And already the press of the U.S. just making Mexico uncomfortable, giving away needless passes on that last spell. Played forward by Q. Softball back from Mexico, intercepted. Sonnet, Sullivan, Davidson has Rapino with her. They almost run into each other. Dunn tried to get to that ball. And instead, can Mexico counter? 
on a deflected pass. They're looking for Katie Johnson. And it's coming back deep. Let's go downstairs. Katie with them. What are you hearing from the USA bench? Constant communication coming from Jill Ellis early in this one. JP, she's reminding her team uh, to keep up the pace, specifically moving the ball quicker. Ali mentioned them already finding that space in behind. And that's another thing that Jill Ellis has called for them. Pick up your head and see the space in behind, but also shift as one. The other message right now, win every second ball on any 50-50. There's Rapino. One of them, U.S. Rapino will get the assist. Pugh gets her fourth goal of 2018. It's a young Mexican side that was brought in here, and they haven't had a really good five minutes. Morgan in some space, Rapino running in behind. Has to just make a little play on that ball because Bianca Hengler is coming off of her line, and here you see it. She just gets a toe to it to slip that into Pew. Catches Hengler off her line, and then Pew has an easy put away on this one. But this all starts with Alex Morgan popping in front of that back line that springs Rapino ultimately. Good interplay between those two because those are the three front runners getting within about 18 yards of each other. Some great numbers in the early career of Mallory Pugh, becoming more of a factor now with the Washington Spirit team as well. Said that she lost some confidence towards the end of last year because of all of the losses. She wasn't used to that when she plays in the U.S. team. They normally win. <laughs> and that was fascinating to hear, but I can understand it. This year already she started with so much more confidence and you can see that she's going to find the game more. Sonnet. Emily will have another go at it. Trying to turn on Ocampo. How does Mexico respond after conceding early? We'll play that ball in the space. Stephanie Mayor is after it. The speed of Crystal Dunn. Getting to it. Back to the feet of Nair. That's a difficult ball for her. And the U.S. is able to escape. Is that a good word there? Escape? <laughs> it is, but it's also brave. This is what you want to see out of the U.S. in these games that aren't in qualifiers. Can they play out of this pressure? Mexico's only sending two or three players. They should be able to handle it with appropriate positioning. But I think that's a warning shot fired by Mexico hitting that space behind Dunn. Johnson was just calling for it. Mayor. Nair comes out and grabs it. Stephanie Mayor is definitely a player to watch for Mexico. Her teammate, Bianca Henninger, said that she is fearless with the ball. Horan leaves it off. Sonnet. Picked off. U.S. getting sloppy now. A little sloppy with the passing. Johnson leads it. Long run there. Palacios for Mayor. Cut off. Up for Rapino. Megan's pass towards the streaking Alex Morgan. Alex tried to go inside of Sierra or Mejia and could not. Ania Mejia with a block that goes out of play. Well, both those last attacks from Mexico, JP, are hitting that weak side in behind the space that Crystal Dunn's vacating when the U.S. is in there three back. Ball was pushed ahead. Said Mallory Pugh's fourth goal of 2018, but it's her 10th international goal, and she's the first U.S. women's national team player to score 10 goals as a teenager since Christy Welsh, 2000-2001. So that's going back a bit in the history. Too far for Rapino. Goal kick here for Mexico. Mallory Pugh with a game's only goal. We're here in the 10th minute. Just 19 years of age. Where does her game seem to get better to you, Allie? I, I think it's still with her confidence to go insert herself in the match, to go find the game and take players on because she's so good with those slalom runs. Rapino kept it on the deck, but it's turned away by Bianca. Sierra. I think the next step for her, however, is the decision-making aspect. 
bringing others into play, combining, not just being a 1v1 artist. Oran in trouble, but goes back safely to Nair. And even another element that I want to see out of her is playing with the space. Yes, staying wide, but also finding that interior pocket because she isn't just someone that has to get isolated 1v1. I know that's what Jill wants to see, but I think she can ask more questions of the opponent by being more versatile and popping inside or staying wide. Dunn at the halfway line area. Getting it back from Morgan Bryan. Bryan now playing for club soccer in Lyon. They're in the UEFA Champions League semifinals against Manchester City. Right side for Horan. Tucks it in nicely, flag stays down. Pew in front. Oh, she had the right idea, but it's knocked out. It's ruled a goal kick. In the last attack by the U.S., it was two passes. They break both lines and then ultimately slip Q in on the near side. Gets her head up. Alex Morgan is past that near post. She's trying to cut it back to that second runner in behind, it looks like. I think if Alex Morgan holds up her run there, JP, better option for Pew in that moment. This game is being brought to you by AT&T. Brian back for it. Comes all the way back for Nair. Short ball ahead, Davidson. Crystal Dunn is the left back, but she's been playing up high, almost as if there were three in the back and her being more of a wing back. Absolutely, that's their attacking shape. One of her strengths is an open space on that flank. A bit too far for Horan. The ball rolls away from her. It's a throw in. Let's go downstairs to Katie with them. A lot of in-game adjustments happening right now. JP, you and Allie just mentioned Crystal Dunn pushing up high. They actually want her higher. They've also called out to Abby Dahlkemper telling her she's got to cover the middle. They're pushing Emily Sonnet wider and Lindsay Horan higher up top. Thank you, Katie. It's Davidson on the ball. A 1-0 U.S. lead. 13th minute, the only goal. Mallory Pugh, 10th international goal. Going long. Dunn, who played for Chelsea, now with North Carolina in the NWSL. Drops it back for Rapino. Rapino, it's deflected. Horan has blocked off the face. Looks like Monica Flores, she's down. Looks like she took that one straight in the face. And but to go back to what Katie was saying about positioning, you can you can see and we'll get a big shot of it again when the u.s is building up but you, you can see that sonnet pulling wider will give the u.s more options and breaking that first line of pressure here's a look at the shot that just comes off of flores there haran on the half turn trying to make something of nothing flores right now not attached to a club went to notre dame tried it with sky blue of the nwsl but did not make the club not many of these players these days are unattached. Several of them, Ali, are playing in either Europe now or South America or in their own league now. And you're going to see probably massive or dividends in the future for Mexico because of that. You have to be playing at a high level consistently in order to compete, to qualify for World Cups, and that's what all these players ultimately dream of. We have a 16 team league now. Made up of teams in Liga MX. Only two Liga MX teams did not field a women's team this year. The champions were Chivas of Guadalajara. Upfield, the U.S. looks for a second. They almost sprung Pugh. Good anticipation there from Pugh with Morgan pulling off that back line. She pulled a defender out of shape, which opened up that space for Pugh to sneak in on. Floor is still being tended to in the sideline, so Mexico. Right now, playing with 10. Mexico try to find Johnson. Mexico have not had much possession at all here, especially in the USA's half of the field. And I think that's purposeful and also somewhat of a, of a reaction to how the U.S. has been dominating the match thus far. But Mexico wants to keep it tight. They've been squeezing the game. I mean, they're, they're back line to their front lines about 30, 40 yards apart. So they are keeping it tight, and they want to spring quickly and attack. That doesn't mean a lot of possession. 
Henninger makes the easy play. Long pumped ahead. That one was moving. Not a down by Davidson, and it goes out of play. But if you're wondering about her kicking game. <laughs> and Davidson's better option there is just to nod that back to Nair. Looked like perhaps a miscommunication between the two. Off that throw in. Ah, ah. It's off done. U.S. winning it. Looking to break out. They'll try the long ball. Trying to find Lindsey Horan. Played back with just enough pace to Henninger. And now out of play. Well, Mexico still playing with the 10. 10 players. They were still looking at Flores on the sideline. They have players warming up, but have not made the change. They need to decide quickly because the U.S. has been on the front foot with 11. Off Morgan, it's going to go out of play. Mexico's ball. Eighty twenty is the possession stat. USA's favor. You'd expect them to have more possession, but certainly not eighty twenty. No, it's incredibly lopsided and. Even just watching the way Mexico is defending the U.S., I think they're making it too easy for the U.S. to solve that first line of pressure. Flores is back into the game, so Mexico are back with their full complement of players. Ball deflected over the sideline. <laughs> Throw it to Sonnet. Headed up first by Q. Then to Morgan, and then Morgan is taken down. Foul is given. It's Feral. Feral plays for Marseille in France. She'll be disappointed with her men's performance in Europa League today. They lost. <laughs> Dal Kemper and Davidson back and forth. They go with it. Sonnet dropping back to help. Looks for Sullivan. Dispossessed there are the U.S. Ocampo. That first ball needed to be better for Mayor. Instead, the U.S. is back on the ball. Adding to that lopsided possession. The goal by Mallory Pugh in the sixth minute is the difference. Megan Rapino assisting on it. Out of play, throw in here for Mexico. Pressure the ball from Rapino. Results in a turnover. The U.S. with it. Mexico scrambling back to get to it, and then Henniger will just boot it away more to safety than anything else. It's a U.S. throw in. And again, it's just Mexico squandering possession over a little bit of pressure from the U.S. Mexico's coach Medina is talking about and looking for his leaders to help out today, and we've not seen that, certainly not from an offensive standpoint, maybe here. Katie Johnson trying to hold it up. She does well to get that foul and a free kick here for Mexico. And I sure thought in this moment where it was going to be reminiscent of her College Cup goal that she scored, getting that head up. I thought she was going to unleash it there in that moment because Nair was off her line. She opts to spin turn out of it, ultimately draws the foul. And here the U.S. is holding a high line. Refs moving them back. We'll see if they play this into the back post, get runners across the face of Nair. It's about 25 yards away oh, from goal. Nice. Ocampo and Mayor. You think one of those two will take it. There's a deeper player as well. Step over Mayor. And that's over the bar. Mayor made the run. Ocampo on the kick. Nair will have a goal kick for the U.S. And here Mexico's trying to squeeze in, not allow the U.S. to play out from this goal kick. We'll see who wins the first and second. 
U.S. versus Mexico. That second game, 1.30 Eastern time on Fox. From Houston, Texas. So these two teams haven't met since 2016. They're going to meet twice in a matter of days. Foul given there. Free kick, U.S. Colin Mayor. Done. Sending one up. It's too high for anyone. Brought back down by Sullivan. Oran on the turn, and that's wide of Henninger. Goal kick, Mexico. A lot of competition now, Ali, in these midfield spots. U.S. missing several players that are normally starters, especially in the midfield, like a Julie Ertz, like a Sam Mueller. So Harris also missing. So when all these players come back, it's going to be some competition, especially in midfield. And that's fun. Fun for the coach. But I think you can add Lavelle to that list if she can get healthy. Yes, for sure, Rose Lavelle. It's a good problem, coaches will say, though. It's better than not having enough quality at those positions. And I think part of the beauty of it as well is how different those players can be and the different looks they can give you as you head into qualifying. You can change up tactics accordingly, whether it's an Ertz sitting in as a six, her ability to get into the box, Mewis's ability to drive and break lines on the dribble, Sullivan's distribution, as you see there. Healing the ball. Just seems like now there's a lot more depth both in the midfield position and also at center back. Sonnet. Mallory Key. Sullivan. Forced back, but still keeps it back for Dal Kemper. Davidson looking for some movement. It's not there up higher, so she'll play it back. Sonnet. Horan. Over the top, brought down nicely. The cross from Morgan, off Rapino, settling. The return doesn't get there. That was a miss from Horan. Fights to win it back, though. It was a good job. Morgan came back to help, too. Now it's finally out. Really patient attack from the U.S. going side to side there. Andy Sullivan had a nice one-touch pass that ultimately gave her teammate time to face up, but you can see with the U.S., they're getting four players on the back line of Mexico. In that last moment, Morgan checks Pugh, gets in behind. Really making that back line think. Mexico gives the ball away again. Pugh with the only goal. U.S. with a 1-0 lead. Huge edge in possession. But just that 1-0 scoreline. Pew goes back. Dal Kemper. U.S. has only conceded a couple of goals in 2018. They've had a hard time scoring outside of that Denmark game, though. 5-1 win there. But one goal in each game since. Three games. One here so far tonight. But it came early in the sixth minute. But I would say they're creating more chances today, and you would expect that against this young side that Mexico brought. Not as experienced. You'd have to say the U.S. has the better players. Iran settled it. Played it out wider. Hughes cross inside, and it was just missed. It was there. And that ball is so good by Mallory Pugh. You can just see she does a nice little inside-out moves, gets her defender off balance just enough to whip that ball in. Alex Morgan reads it. The timing is right. I think Mejia just gave her enough of a nudge to take her off of it. Looked like. 25th minute, a 1-0 U.S. lead on a Mallory Pugh goal. Knocked away from her. Last touch by Pew. It's ruled, so it's a throw in for Monica Flores. Right in front of her own bench. A 
Mexico will give it away again. They've had a good 2018 so far, three wins and a loss. They played in the Turkish Cup, won their first three games before losing to France. Q taking off. Five in the attack, make it six now as Dunn joins the party on that left side. Crystal Dunn going inside towards Morgan. Nice move by Morgan. End line, cuts, Rapino. It was there again. That's a great opportunity, but no goal. Well, the U.S. can afford to throw all those numbers forward because Mexico's only keeping one player high in Katie Johnson. And here's Alex Morgan just fading into that left side, sizes up her player, makes her, and then drives in line, gets her head up to play that cutback ball. I think Rapino goes with her left there. She almost gets wrong footed. If she goes with her left there, she can get that on frame. Off Rapino, settling it. Megan keeping control, coming off a great year with Seattle, 12 goals last year. And WSL Player of the Month in this first month of the new season. On this right side, Mayor. In front of Kempo! Oh, that should have been tied. Should have been 1-1. Totally against the run of play. Totally. But that's what Mexico's banking on as they come into this matchup. And again, it's that space in behind Crystal Dunn that gets exposed. Great way to bring that ball down, chested into stride. And then really intelligent run by Ocampo to pull herself out and create that space between the re retreating back line and the mids. Terrific veteran, Monica Ocampo. One of those four players that are playing for a club team now in Mexico in the new league. Look at that with the speed. Outside, Hugh inside. Henniger comes up with it. What a first half for Mallory Pugh. The pace just seems unfair. Playing with a lot of confidence, both for club and country. Was supposed to go to UCLA, decided to turn professional, played last year with the Washington Spirit. Six goals in a short season for her. Who knows what she'll have this year. And it's going to be interesting to watch her develop because players have to manage confidence, ebbs and flows, and it did impact her last year when her team wasn't performing well. As this season ramps up, heading into qualifying and then on to the World Cup, can she manage those expectations as they get higher and higher for her? Nair will put it back into play. It's funny, at age 19, all the offensive pressure right that's on her, much like on the men's side, Christian Pulisic, they're expecting him to carry the load, but he's a young player too. But his experience is a little bit different with going overseas, playing for Dortmund. Yeah. You could argue that's more pressure than playing for your national team, but with Pew, it's a different story. This is the coup de gras at the moment. Johnson. Lost it there, Ocampo goes for it. Not close enough. Rapino, an active first half for her too. Done. Played just about anywhere in this field with the exception of goalkeeper, lost it out. She said yesterday that she feels like she's in mid-season form and that's because she played 23 games last year with Chelsea and then another five this year before she came over to join the North Carolina Courage in the NWSL. But playing in different roles with the courage higher on the pitch here with the U.S. in that outside back spot. Ooh, and a turnover. Johnson blocked. U.S. got rid of it. Despite this lopsided edge on the field itself, it's only a 1 0 lead, and really it should be 1 1. Ocampo normally should finish from there. Such a good point. It hasn't been clean from the U.S. In terms of their defensive organization and the way they're handling that space that Dunn is leaving exposed, but that's what they're asking of her is to get higher on the pitch. And that's going to go out of play. Almost out of play. Kept in by Sonnet. Hearing a lot of chatter from both benches, actually, from high up above here at Everbank Field. Q 
Aquino will drop it back. And Mexico's back on the ball. They go back to goal. Penninger. And right between the benches, it goes out intended for Ocampo. After a half hour gone, Ali are taking the game. I think it, it's had some really, really positive moments for the U.S. and then some not great moments. Like you said, that, that could have been capitalized. Even that last squandered possession by Crystal Dunn straight to the opponent in a defensive third has to be better, has to be sharper and cleaner. And this is something that comes with decision-making under pressure. Crystal Dunn's obviously not used to playing in that outside back role yet. Ball lost out off Horan. You're, you're allowed six subs now in friendlies like this, but I'm surprised to see U.S. players up so early in this game. I don't know if that's indicative that maybe there's a change coming or if they're just warming up. We saw with Mexico players warming up, but that was for an injury to Flores, but she stayed in. Certainly something to keep an eye on, but sometimes coaches just have their rituals and protocol of I want you to start warming up at the 30th minute just in case. So you can keep these players healthy, and that's one of the concerns for the U.S. with this long end of the season as they head into qualifying, managing club and country. How do these players stay healthy? Swings it wider. Crystal Dunn looking to go 1v1. One of her strong suits. End line. Thought that the entire ball was out. And now the assistant referee does have the flag up. It is a goal kick. What does Crystal Dunn have to get used to now? Playing as a left back instead of more of an attacking player. Decision making, right? Being assured with your possession if you are building out of the back. She's a player that is confident on the ball, but it's going to be reading how quickly players will close in. Because in the offensive third, you're not punished as much as you are in your defensive half. She just wants to play and impact the game. In the ideal world, she'd probably rather play closer to the opponent's goal. But she said, if I have to play outside back, I want to be the best that I can be and work my tail off. So she's saying all the right things. And right now, at least tonight, starting left back as she was in the previous game. And I think potentially that's the an area that the U.S. needs the most is more support in the outside back roles. I do think her upside is that she can be someone like a Marcelo from Real Madrid. I know she wants to be Crystal Dunn and just Crystal Dunn, but she can run a flank the way he can because of her offensive ability. Mejia was under pressure. Ball was lost, but last touch by the U.S. Henniger will have a goal kick. The 2018 FIFA World Cup beginning June 14th on Fox Sports. All eyes on Russia. And so many great stars that we will be seeing. Messi, Ronaldo, to name a couple. But there'll be plenty more, and that's one of the beauties of a World Cup. Names that maybe we don't hear so much about become stars on the biggest stage. Morgan Bryan, ball taken away. Fight for it on the wing, and it's still in play. Mexico goes back to their goalkeeper. Not that much pace on it, but Henninger was there. Dunn was trying to defend there as the ball comes all the way back. A little clutching and grabbing as it goes out. It's ruled a corner. I'm just constantly impressed, though, with Tierna Davidson. I mean, Johnson is an incredibly pacey front runner, and for her to stay stride to stride with her there, go to ground and win the challenge, big time from the young player. Monica Ocampo will take Mexico's first corner here in the 35th minute. Ocampo to the middle, and it just got by. I thought that ball was going to find its way in. Nair rolls it ahead. And the goalkeeper position is one that I know Nair has for now, but she just goes fishing and flying in on that. Doesn't get anywhere near that ball. Mexico could have found themselves yeah. 
That net was inviting. It yeah. was inviting. It's wide open. Flores. I think that's a position the U.S. has to look at very intently going forward, whether it's you start to invest in French, some of the goalkeepers that are in the NWSL that are showing promise. On this right side, push back to Sonnet. Mexico's played with a lot more confidence over the last seven to ten minutes. Almost scored once from Ocampo, and that easily could have been a goal. Had someone gotten a foot on it into that open net. More confidence, but I think the U.S. has taken their foot off the gas a little bit. Ball played up and through to Morgan. Cutting, Morgan shot low. Hennigar, no rebound. And just like that, the U.S. finds themselves in the attacking third with two passes. I don't think they've been using the center of the park. Andy Sullivan's been the most active center midfielder thus far. She's the one who finds Morgan that gets herself on that turn. Hanger with the assured hands, as you said. Ocampo. That's a pressure. Sonnet. Dal Kemper. Davidson. Crystal Dunn goes forward, looks. Morgan had a step behind the defense, and now the offside flag is up on the U.S. And I think the U.S. JP is doing a nice job of swinging it from flank to flank as this half progresses, but they're just not finding the center midfielders as much. Sullivan, yes, but not Haran, not Morgan in an advanced positions. If they are finding them, it's because Haran's pulling out to the flank. They're not going down the center of the park. I know that's where it's crowded, but those players can handle that pressure. And I think you ask that of them in matches like this. The clearance from Henninger. Second ball headed by Davidson, but it goes out for a Mexico throw in. U.S. with a 1-0 lead on a Mallory Pugh goal that came in the sixth minute. Towards the end line, ball deflected out. Goal kick, U.S. It was Keanu Palacios who was after it. Listen there, we'll put it back into play. Her club team, Chicago Red Stars, used to play for the Boston Breakers before a trade to Chicago. All the way back. Henninger. Short ball with a lot on it. Mejia to the right with that ball. Mexico will try to get some numbers forward. Six in the attack now. It's the most they brought forward with possession here. Right side. Can they cross? They do. Tedder for Johnson cleared. Mexico first to the ball. Flores, that's blocked. Driven long, and the foul is given there against the U.S. Despite the protest of Dal Capo, free kick here for Ocampo in Mexico. And Mexico advanced out of their defensive third when Rapino pressed in and the team didn't go with her. That was one thing Jill Ellis talked about coming to this match was can they squeeze the game together? Well, in that moment, they were disjointed and Mexico sprung on them. Hit that weak space outside the three center mids. Campos 82nd appearance for her country. She has scored 14 times. She and Mayor are over the ball. On the whistle, the left foot of Ocampo. And right near the arms of Villasenea here in the 40th minute. Opportunity wasted for Mexico. Nair's boot. Horan tried to keep it in. Ball is out, belongs to Mexico. About five minutes to go. 
here in this opening half of play. And the referee's having a word or two with Palacios. U.S. losing it there. Farrell trying to switch that point of attack. The idea was good. Ball a bit too heavy in the touch. Done with Ocampo. Locked out. Belongs to the U.S. Coming up at halftime, sponsored by AT&T. Katie and Luzzy will have all of your first half highlights and analysis. They'll also talk Tournament of Nations. We'll reveal the teams at halftime. Busy summer for the USA with games like this, other games coming up in the summer, and then of course World Cup qualifying will start in October. US has been designated as the host for that tournament, no surprise there. Sonnet. It was a good start for the US on that goal in the sixth minute by Pugh, but these last 10 to 15 minutes, it's been more of an even game. And I think Mexico's sorted out their spacing defensively. Horan. Foul there by Bianca Sierra. And that last attack for the U.S., they get lucky on the turnover, but initially Sonnet tries to play a ball in, into Pew with pressure right up her back. Those are probably the decisions that have to evolve with this group if you want to see them go to that next level. It's not on there. They've got to change it. Referee allowed play to continue. Rapino still complaining about that. And the U.S. will lose the ball. It's a Mexico throw in. Flores will take this throw in for Mexico. In the dying moments of this opening half from Jacksonville, Florida. U.S. cleared it out away from Katie Johnson. Another Flores throw in. Goes short with this one. Stephanie Mayor. Knocked out for another Mexico throw. U.S. try to clear it out. We'll get a second opportunity here. In the middle, played forward by Brian. Hugh leading it, three in the attack. Mexico have numbers back to defend. A good half dozen. That was like a three on six break for the U.S. Davidson. But as Pew dribbled centrally, allowed all that time for the defenders to retreat. That attack initially started with a good decision by Haran. Lindsay Horan on the ball, right side. The return towards Horan is cut off. U.S. throw in. 44th minute. A one goal lead thanks to Mallory Pugh's goal in the sixth minute. The Cisco in a Rapino. Mexico will get it back. Pushed back by Palacios. Intended for Mayor. She got a slight touch to it. Pew to the middle. Dunn on the run. Pistol Dunn setting it up wide. Looking for the one at the back post. Horan's touch. Morgan pulling it. Looking up. That's off the referee. Unlucky for the U.S. They get it back, though. Wide for Horan in the final minute. Rapino. Short ball ahead. Left there, intended for Horan. Picked up by Brian, deflected. And it should be a U.S. corner. A good wave of pressure there by the United States. It took Mallory Pugh, the one, to change it out of this side. It was really caught on the flank. She got her head up, sprung the weak side, and that's how the U.S. ultimately got in. And then because Mexico only keeps one player high, the shape at the top of the box just allows the U.S. to put waves and waves of pressure on Mexico. 
important corner here. Into stoppage time. Rapino going for it. That was close. I know she's shaking her head, but you gotta love that confidence. She clearly is trying to whip this in on hanging her, hanging her, who's off of her line. That would have been an awful way for Mexico to end the half because they've gotten themselves some confidence, some composure. This is not a bad scoreline to go into the locker room at halftime. The way the way it started certainly with 80 to 20 percent ball possession and a one nothing deficit. I don't know if the goal for Medina is to see his side grow in confidence in these moments. He's seeing it. They've got to defend against this. Pew. And that's going over high and wide. But the U.S. is creating chances. They're just not putting them away. And that was going to be their last creation. So, first 45 minutes are gone. Your take on what we've seen so far. I think the U.S. came out hot and then it was Mexico's shape in their pressure that was really easy for the U.S. to solve initially. They had three pressing that back line, and one pass took them all out, and you were seeing the U.S. really have the domino effect and breaking them apart. But as soon as Mexico solved that, it was harder for the U.S. to systematically pull them out of shape, and that's what you have to see in the second half is how do they pull them apart, spread them apart to then go centrally. What was your take on Mexico the way they came back? Overall, you just saw their confidence grow within this game. They're a young side, and it's about how they can adapt and figure things out within the flow of play. The goal scorer is Mallory Pugh. She's downstairs with Katie Witham. Well, Mallory, you guys head into the locker room up a goal thanks to yours in the sixth minute. What did you think overall of this first half? Um, I think it just overall needs to be better. I think um, defensively we can be all on the same page and then on the attack inside the ball I think we could just move it quicker you see there are some good parts in it in um, the first half but I think overall um, I think we can just be better with the intensity appreciate the time thank you thank you young Mallory Pugh with a terrific goal we've come to expect big plays from her she has the only goal in this first half of play the assist to Rapino one nothing USA over Mexico at the half 